Kevin. Hi, how are you? Today we're going to be making a song that kind of sounds like Tame Impala. I'll preface this by saying that this was very hard, but I think the finished product is passable at the very least. It's kind of hard to put Tame Impala into a box sound-wise. I tried to incorporate elements from the various releases of Tame Impala, so this is not too focused, but I ended up liking it, so let's get started. This song is not going to end up being the length of your average Tame Impala song. I just put in the various sections for explanation's sake. I'm not trying to change the world with this song. I think we can all agree that Kevin Parker likes himself some bass, so that's where I started. I wanted to go for the, the less I know the better type feel. But that's not the only song where the bass is a very key element, but I feel like it's the one that comes to all of our minds. So I made something that I thought was cool. Here's what that is. For the bass, I used the Stereo Traveler preset, and I turned off the spreader. It was, it just sounded kind of like Tame Impala to me, so that's what I used. We're gonna do drums now, just to fill out the rest of the rhythm section. Lately, Tame Impala has kept it pretty disco, so that's the place I went. I used Hi-Fi Pop as the drum set, because it sounded close, the closest to me. I don't know, not much to elaborate on. So synths is the area that gets harder to explain because, as you can see, there are three of them. They're all doing similar things, but the three individually exist to enhance each other, you know? I got them panned into interesting areas <laughs> to sort of create a big wall of warbly greatness. My advice for synths, and just chords in general, is that you want to add the major sevenths and the minor sevenths, because Kevin uses those a lot, and they just sound cool. And two of the synths have a phaser on them, because because you can't make a Tame Impala song without having the phaser in there. And the guitar preset thing I used was a, uh, a Vox-inspired preset, because Kevin uses a Vox AC30. Specific notes about composition here and things that Kevin likes to do. He likes drum fills, and the drum fills usually are not just a quick blip and then into the next section. They are drawn out in the best way. That is not a diss. I like that. And he's just a really good drummer. Not saying that these drum fills are expertly crafted, <laughs> but you know, they sounded okay. And also at a certain point in the song that repeats, I sort of cut out all the music to, I don't know, create tension or whatever. I don't know. I've, I've noticed that he does that. So I did it too. For the verse, I did a thing where I just made the bass play one note and then I just had everything else change the context of that note to make it fit into different chords. I shamefully based that off of this video you're seeing on screen. You should go watch it because it's really cool and it's just a fine example of, you know, just crafting a song for fun like we're doing right here.
free chorus section. I basically just put this in here to use the other drum beat that Kevin uses a lot, which is the double time or whatever it's called, with the kick hitting with every snare hit, except for the one that has the claps on it. You gotta have the claps on there, you know, to make it feel like a dance party. So this is the part that I really like. It's the closest I've gotten to the Tame Impala fuzz guitar sound. To get the sound, I used the tube burner pedal in the pedal board section. But yeah, that gets pretty close to the sound I was looking for. Again, I've shamefully copied. Basically, the bridge is based off of both Let It Happen and Why Won't You Make Up Your Mind. We're just getting dangerously close to almost doing everything verbatim that Kevin does. I would not advise doing this in your own music. I'm just doing that for the sake of explanation and showing all the various elements that you could take away from this and put into your own songs. <laughs> end up going into the final chorus. I just made it the chorus as it was before, but I put in the riff from the bridge so that everything sort of crescendos together. Some of the more grandiose sort of magnum opus type songs of Tame Impala go. Everything sort of crescendos together into this big glorious musical moment. So that's what I wanted to do. That's the kind of Tame Impala that I enjoy. It's borderline classical, except with phaser. Sam Apollo lyrics tend to revolve around loneliness, you know, lonerism. A lover, because why not? You gotta put that in there. Time, because that's basically what the newest album, The Slow Rush, was all about. And changing your mindset, and that's what I found a lot of currents to be about. Just basically mixing everything into one song. I actually don't know what my final product ended up being about, but I don't know. I tried to fit lyrical themes and stuff but you know you be the judge of that also my falsetto singing leaves a lot to be desired and the vocals don't really sound much like tim paul at all but i was just whatever we're having fun right anyway without further ado here's what the final product was <laughs>
yeah, I think that was pretty decent. I'm satisfied with it. Let me know if you're satisfied with it. Maybe give me some tips that I could use to improve my own Tame Impala copying powers. And on screen, I'm just going to put some of the EQs that I used on instruments that I think require the EQ being shown. I didn't do it for the synths because you really just want to make the synth EQs exist in a way that, you know, works within the song. It's situational, and depending on what synths you use and for what purposes, they're going to be EQ'd differently. Also, I want to note that real Tame Impala songs are much more intricate than this. This is a very simplified version of a Tame Impala song. We were just doing it to sort of almost get there and put you on the starting path to maybe writing the way he does and all that fun stuff. Also, I want to note, uh, I'm going to leave the SoundCloud link for this song in the description. For some reason, I can't figure out a way to make them clickable. I don't know if that's a YouTube partnership thing or I'm just dumb. But for those of you on laptop or desktop or whatever, which is probably barely any of you, copy and paste that link. Uh, but for those of you on mobile, I'm just going to show the link to my SoundCloud page if you want to listen to the song after this video is over because that's easier to type in and it's shorter than the entire big link that is in the description or whatever. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. And I'll see you in another video. <laughs>